Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zade here with another episode of Sage Experience. Today, we're going to be doing a recipe for all you carnivores out there or for all you people that are just kind of right now at stay at home and don't know what the hell to cook. Today, we're going to be making a unique recipe. I did not get this recipe from anywhere. I'm actually going to be making it on the spot. That's right. I think this is going to be my version of a pulled rib roast. Instead of pulled pork, we're going to be doing pulled rib roast. I was thinking about this recipe because there's a lot of people that are saying that the carnivore diet can get pretty boring and you're right, it can get pretty boring. However, it can also be very, very interesting depending on the spices that you're willing to use and how much leeway you're willing to give the diet. If you're one of the fortunate ones before the meat market's close, come with me and let's get this recipe done. So for today's recipe, you're only gonna need three things. You're gonna need a Dutch oven, you're gonna need your oven, and you're gonna need a standing rib roast and whatever spices you guys might wanna add to this. It's gonna be fairly simple, it's gonna be super straightforward. So time to head over to the kitchen, guys. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off that oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And yes, I know that wasn't exactly 350 degrees Fahrenheit. My oven tends to run a little hot because that knob isn't the original one. So I know that's about 350 degrees because I've tested it. Next, we're also gonna need to have our Dutch oven ready to go in hand. So set that up somewhere where you can easily access it. Now for the main star. We have a rib roast here. As you can see, this was kind of a cheap cut. It's not, it doesn't have super nice marbling, if any marbling, but it is a rib roast nonetheless. And it doesn't have the fat cap either. They took that off for some reason and it still has a bone in it. Yeah, still has a couple of bones in there. So we're gonna leave all that intact. We're not gonna do anything to it. But the first thing that we do need to do is to start patting it dry. Yes, we need to pat this dry because we're gonna put some crust on this bad boy. All sides, let's make sure we go all the way, no half-assing this, it's really important. Then what we need to do is we need to cover this bad boy with salt. Now we're gonna heavily salt this guy on the outside because it is a big, big piece of meat. So we want it to be fairly salted on all sides. And when I mean all sides, I mean all sides, guys, come on. It's a piece of rib roast. So once we're done with that, then we're gonna add some pepper to it. And I mean, who doesn't like pepper, guys? It's a must have, again, on all sides. Let's make sure everything gets that pepper. So we're good. Now we're gonna start adding some flavor. I always like to put in a little garlic with all my meat and right, this right here is granulated garlic. I just feel it works really, really well. So I'm gonna season it on all sides. Just put a little bit of granulated garlic all over and then add some cumin. I like cumin because I like the flavor of it, and yeah, I think it'll pair well with this. And if you're as smart as I am, halfway through you'll realize that you could have done this in this bad boy, and that would have made your life a lot easier and clean up a lot easier as well. So make sure you pat that all over. Make sure you give it a little slap. Make sure it's well covered in that cumin. Now we're gonna add some smoked paprika. I kind of decided this halfway because I wasn't sure if I was going to use the smoked paprika, but mine as well. It's kind of starting to become summer, so I'm starting to miss barbecues, and smoked paprika does it for me. Especially while in quarantine. Yay for the inside. Now we're going to add some more red stuff, and this one is going to be cayenne pepper. I wanted to make it spicy halfway through, I decided, you know... Let's make it spicy. Again, none of these flavors were picked out beforehand. This is y me getting creative in the kitchen. There's no reason why you guys can't either. Once we rub all that stuff in there, it is good to go. Now all we need to do is preheat our cast iron pan to a medium high heat. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be browning all sides of that rib roast because we wanna get some crust on it. So in goes a little bit of olive oil. Make sure we heat that up. Remember guys, we wanna get a good crust on this. We don't wanna boil it. We don't wanna make it look like it's been boiled. So after a couple of minutes, in goes your rib roast. Pick a side, whichever side you guys want, because we're gonna be browning all sides of this bad boy. So however you guys manage, uh, try getting it brown on all of these sides. Move it around, stay in one side for a little while, give it a couple of minutes, then move it around for the other side. And as you guys can see, this is what we want. We want this crust on our rib roast. Go through all the sides, don't get lazy on me. What you can do meanwhile is maybe get a sip of some amazing coffee. So once you're done browning all sides, guys, make sure you put the bone side down. This is gonna be super important because we need the fat cap or 
the lack of the fat cap in my piece of rib roast. We want that to be on top because that is going to melt away whilst we're cooking this on the oven and it's going to keep our piece of rib roast nice and moist. Like I said, halfway through I decided that I was going to make this spicy so I remembered that I had some dried habanero somewhere in my cabinet and lo and behold I found them. I also found another set of peppers that I had that I thought I'd run out of. They're called chile piquin. I'm pretty sure if you go down the Mexican aisle, you'll be able to find these. But in goes a handful, as much as you guys want. Then cover that bad boy up, and we're gonna toss it into the oven for anywhere from six to seven hours. This piece of particular rib roast was about 10 pounds. So for 10 pounds, I was gonna use six hours. And we are good to go. Maybe get another swish of that coffee if you have any. And this is a perfect time to start cleaning up. Yes, this kitchen looks terrible, but six hours should be plenty to clean all this stuff up. Now we're gonna be checking this halfway through. It's been about four hours and that is already starting to look amazing. I can still see that some of the fat cap is still there and as you guys can see, it's still not quite super tender. It's still a little hard. So back goes for an extra three and a half hours. Another three and a half hours have gone by and voila, that looks amazing and completely different. As you guys can see, the fat cap has completely melted off. And in comparison to the three and a half hours, this is completely been tenderized by that fat cap. It's super, super pull off. Like you, I'm not even trying guys, literally look, look. Um, I'm holding a camera and at the same time I'm pulling. What? Great, so as you guys saw, there was a bunch of liquid at the bottom of the pot. Instead of throwing all that out, which would be a complete sin, we're gonna pull all this rib roast apart. And as always, autofocus has failed me. Thank you, Canon. And we're gonna mix it up with all the juices that were left over in the pan. Look at that, wow. It's super easy, guys, I'm not even trying. And I can't stress enough how well this smells. And, oh, there's one of the bones. Ah, ah, one bone, two bone, ah, three bone, three lovely little bones. Do as you will with all these. I will say it does make your dish look amazing if you leave them in there. It looks like some kind of Brett Flintstone kind of thing. And this is ready to go, guys. Look at all that meat for all you carnivores out there. By no means was this ever dry at any point. This was amazing, guys. Again. Just goes to show you what a little bit of creativity, no fear of messing up a piece of rib roast, and some good ingredients can do. All on quarantine. Yeah. Again, guys, this is just not a carnivore recipe. This ended up being the main dish for my girlfriend's party. We just had her birthday this past weekend and it was totally amazing. Everybody was saying, hey, what you put in there? What is this? Is this pulled pork? And no, it's actually a piece of rib. It's actually red meat. Well. Pork is technically red meat as well, but people were so surprised. They were so, there were completely different flavors on these, but it was still the main dish. Some people ended up making tacos with these. Some people ended up just eating it by itself. It was just perfect the way it was. And besides the bones look pretty bomb. I kind of set them up in a weird way and people were completely perplexed by it. They were like, ooh, completely different. More than half of the time, it's not that dishes are boring, guys, is that there is a lack of imagination. You heard me right, a lack of imagination. It's your guys' kitchen. You guys can do whatever the heck you want with it. Again, there's no one way to cook a piece of meat, guys, so definitely go ahead and experiment and do whatever the heck you want. Do your kitchen, your house, your rules, make it happen, put whatever spices you want. If you just wanna go super straight carnivore on this, salt and pepper, make sure that fat cap is on top, go through the same browning steps, pull it apart at the end, and there you go. You can do the exact same thing, guys. <laughs> but in any case, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Zay's Experience. Hope you guys liked this episode. Go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell if you haven't already done so. Definitely push that like button. Let me know what you guys think about this recipe. And I'm gonna be making a lot more in the near future because I've been hearing a lot of stuff that the carnivore diet is super boring, and it can be. But again, it all depends on how lenient you are with it. So definitely make sure to stay in tune, guys. But in any case, Zay, out. Peace. You'll excuse me, I left two pieces of tri-tip in the oven that are definitely, definitely ready to go. See you guys?
wasn't kidding. Two pieces of tri-tip. <laughs> 